Now Check. we are. Check. Check my <coughs> mic. Check. Oh. We really should have done this before we started recording. Oh, wait. Recording. I thought you were doing the, uh, don't you got to do the other? Check nah, though. nah, nah. We're just gonna do it. We're just doing it. See, yeah, we're that. just gonna wait until the sound it. clip check, like check, assaults check, our check, ears. Check, yeah, dude. doing it. <laughs> Mike checks. <laughs> People need Mike. Uh, Miguel's too. No, oh, yeah, man. Miguel's. Miguel Jr. Uh, whoever started Miguel Jr. Thank you for your service. <laughs> we appreciate you. If you want to sponsor us and give us free tacos. <laughs> We would yeah, absolutely. I freaking love grateful. Miguel's Jr., man. Oh, don't talk to Dan about that. Dan loves Miguel. Miguel Jr. located in Southern California. Like, real talk for one second. All this stupid Del Taco versus Taco Bell shit can take a hike. It's all about fucking <laughs> Miguel's Jr., guys. Dan, Dan, we stand, we stand united. See, we, we, the, the Inland Empire and Los Angeles together, coming together for one Miguel Jr., dude. I love hey, this, dude. Right now, you can get a yeah. you can get two orders of tequilas for 10 bucks yeah. oh no more ga- what? Dan, That's no more good. gunfights dude nobody else has to lose <laughs> life over this stupid 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 i know war, I'm, I'm tired of spilling so much blood i'm yeah. running out <laughs> dan you like to go every week right <laughs> basically <laughs> <laughs> did i just call you out on yes yes you did <laughs> on national tv I, yes yes you did <laughs> yes on national I tv thought, uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> The crazy part is we went to when we're <laughs> aired on national TV. <laughs> we went, I we called went, out that you like to go out to Miguel's every week and that it's like kind of your thing. The the crazy part is we went to Miguel's, like the original Miguel, not Miguel's Jr. And that wasn't as good. I think Miguel's Jr. is better. <laughs> this is a very niche topic. Miguel's Jr. does not have nearly the reach it needs to to be like on this podcast. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. We, we shouldn't be talking about it. These are regional. Pe- people regional are going to get upset discussion. that they can't have Miguel Jr.'s. Exactly. Uh, so let, let's let's move on. We, we can't we can't tease these people. Like, I want to tease everyone. the people. I want you you, you want to have like the, one of the best tacos you'll ever have. <laughs> no, I like liking, you know, liking liking Miguel's that. got a little awkward starting in 2020 because its birthplace was a city of Corona. Oh, well, oh well. And and then yeah. on the wall inside of my lo- the location nearest to me, like the wall has like you know text to you know glorify its own brand it says Corona Born. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that's no. fine. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> every every thorn deserves a rose. If you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man. Every See, rose has a thorn. That. Yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well deserved. Just, just yeah. like just like Vosh in, in Cupid. No, no, uh, don't jump ahead, Marvin. Come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that. We're having a conversation uh, here, uh, damn it. We, yeah, we, dude. We watched Cupid this week. Uh, we it's sure a did. Pun. It's a pun because Cupid. Oh, my is... God. It's called Cupid. I get it. Uh-huh. And wait a minute. Uh-huh. This episode... Is it releasing on Valentine's Day? I think we'll actually be releasing it on Valentine's Day. Un- well, un- how about that? Unplanned is actually going to line up with Valentine's Day. It so is the be- most, yeah, is the most opportune Wait, release we- that we've ever had, perhaps. We didn't yeah. plan that? No, we didn't plan that at no, all. No, no, it was wow, the opposite that's kind of crazy. It was the, the opposite of my birth. Yeah, that, you, <laughs> know that giant, you know that huge break <laughs> we went unplanned. on during the holidays? Yeah. It was all for this. Yeah. Wait, who was an unplanned baby? <laughs> I was I was unplanned beyond uh, Oh, I was definitely one. unplanned. If you were born in November, congratulations, you're unplanned. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan was unplanned. Marvin, you were planned. They were I was like were. they they were really trying. Okay. To, so you're like the, yeah. you're like a miracle baby. Yeah. Well, yeah, for me it was like they really could not conceive my parents and then I mean, finally- my parents were only wanting one. <laughs> And then they got more. So, <laughs> Wait, that's true. Yeah. Conceive is used like that. I always, I always think it's really funny because I think of like the other form of conception. It's like, what's a baby? Inception. <laughs> also, also though, beyond what the hell's just that, a baby. I was also Concept. just, I was also just as unplanned as well. Unplanned, and then also, if it is going to be unplanned, they only wanted one, and then right, we got more. And than then. That. Yeah. yeah, more baby than they bargained for. Yeah. <laughs> Way more. <laughs> Were you what planned a, or unplanned, what a deal. Ricardo? Unplanned. Unplanned. Yeah. Okay. yeah. In truth, I no feel one like can really planned plan. birds are are fairly like are, are rarer than unplanned. Yeah. Sometimes parents want their kids like Marvin, and in my case. I wasn't wanted. No kidding. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Well, well Cupid first on aired that note. <laughs> on April 22nd of 1991. Dan, let's do it. 
We're going to zoom us, around the sun back us away. back to April 22nd of 1991. Take me away. Whoa, take all me right. Away. So it's actually been a couple of weeks again since the last airing of the previous episode. Mm-hmm. Yes. So um, in the realm of movies, not a whole lot happened because Secret of the Use was revealed to everyone enough times. And Steven Seagal ended up topping the box office again with a movie called Out for Justice. Out where he plays justice. a veteran police detective who sets out to avenge his partner's mafioso murderer. Very generic. It does, was top does, for two weekends. Is this, is this like one Ricardo knows? Or do you yeah, know I know this one. Yeah, oh. I know. I know all of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was it was a number one movie for two box office weekends. So you know, it's so weird to think of so Steven Seagal was like a massive box office. I don't know why I can't reconcile that in my brain. Because it's because early we, 90s, we, dude. We, we didn't have. We didn't have a lot of things, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we had, like Jackie Chan hadn't even shown up yet. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So people didn't know what like really good martial arts looks like. The, the, the truth is, yeah, the truth they is, they were lucky like, if they saw Drew, Bruce Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The truth is, like we had so like Peak Van Dam was like eighty eight through like ninety five. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but like you could only get so many Van Dam movies per year, dude. You gotta that's get your true. fill of martial arts action dude yeah um and they wanted them to be like foreigner for at least foreign looking dudes yeah like steven seagal kind of has that look where he could be like well, maybe you're from eastern europe maybe and he's yeah. Seagal's story steven seagal's story is so crazy it's dumb <laughs> <laughs> you know well isn't he like a wasn't he like ordained by like a like a buddhist monk or something and shit like that like I, I, that I, I who cares what that <laughs> <laughs> no, just the way like he was like he was like he was like somebody's trainer, some like somebody famous trainer, and like they're like, oh, you should you should like do movies, and then they they put him in a movie. Oh, and yeah, so Above the Law was his first kind of role. Oh, in really? in in eighty eight, yeah. Okay, okay. Wait, are we talking about Above We're the Law or Out for or, Justice? But I, I, I kind of want to get done with talking about Out for Justice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, sorry. I, I thought we were talking about Above the Law, and I was way off. But uh, <laughs> it, it, they're all the same because the, they're all stupid. <laughs> yeah, I would like, say, like I said, it's very generic. I feel Out for like, revenge for his partner. I, look, look, they all suck, really, except Under Siege. Yeah, you really mm, like okay. Under Siege. Yeah, because Tom Lee Jones really elevates that movie, dude. And Gary mm. Busey, like at the top of his game, like everyone's yeah. really fucking good, dude. Okay, Have I you can see that argument. Yeah, like when you when you hang it on everyone other than Steven Seagal, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, and Gary Busey before the motorcycle accident is, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. see, every everyone in this fucking in this movie is carrying the movie for him, mm. and it's really spread out well. Like Tom Lee Jones gets gets his time to shine here on his mm-hmm. own as a villain, and and think about like. Tom Lee Jones is a villain. Like that's that's wild. Yeah. Like he, yeah. Uh, up till now, not a lot of villains in his in his. Uh... It was a fugitive was before Under Siege, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that, even then, he wasn't really a villain. He was more of like misguided he was, he was, guy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he was he was just a, a guy doing his job. Yeah. Know, exactly. Just to investigate to the point where when they made the sequel, it stars him. You know, like and then like it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And it the wasn't music like it's over, and we still haven't gotten past Steven Seagal. <laughs> uh, sorry, <laughs> I, just, I just wanted I wanted to let you know that Steven Seagal's <laughs> best movies were Under Siege and Executive Decision. And Executive Decision, he's only in it for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah, so, love love Flock of Seagulls. You. Yeah, uh, April fifth, <laughs> the Atlantis. <laughs> Sorry. The Atlantis space shuttle on April 5th went on its eighth flight in order to deploy the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory in low orbit, which was the second in the Great Observatory series that kicked <laughs> off with the Hubble Space Telescope previously. Oh, its nice. goal was to observe gamma rays, whereas the Hubble's focus was visible light and ultraviolet, which helps explain why more people don't know about this one since it didn't take any pretty pictures. Yeah, it just detects if a Hulk will eventually happen nearby. That's yeah, it, it's it's just looking for Planet Hulk. Uh, <laughs> April 8th, the Oakland A's Stadium becomes the first outdoor arena in the U.S. to ban smoking. First ever. Oh, okay. Just notable. It's 91. It's, oh. That's starting to actually start happening. It's happening. Yeah. Finally. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because when we were in Vegas, it's still all indoor smoking all the oh, time. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. They'll, they'll never change that because nobody <laughs> wants to take a fucking smoke break or yeah. it goes hand in hand drinking and smoking. And well, there, are, there are far fewer places to smoke than there used to be. Yes. Yes. That much is still true. I guess you can't smoke in the rooms as much anymore, but the or casinos. Or directly outside or anything like that. But you can smoke inside the casinos. 
Yeah, yeah go inside there, gamble, start smoking. Yeah. <laughs> it's for you. It's for you. <laughs> they know who they're marketing to. <laughs> on April 19th, Evander Holyfield was on the rise as he beat George Foreman for the heavyweight boxing title. This was around oh. when he, yeah, this is when he took it. So stay oh, no. tuned for more updates on Mr. <laughs> Holyfield. <laughs> you know what's coming up soon. <laughs> I think that's still not for a couple of years at yeah, least. Yeah, it's not soon. It's not yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah, it'll yeah. be a while. It'll be a while. Yeah. We'll get there though someday. Yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> Also that week in the charts, Rick Astley was actually hitting number seven on the singles oh, yeah. with a song called Cry for Help. Oh, so, yeah. you know, just to let you know, he, he wasn't only existing in the 80s. He was still relevant. It's true. And finally, on April 22nd, Johnny Carson announced that he retired the following year from The Tonight Show. God. So, yeah, Wild. in 91, it was still Carson. Wow. Oof. Wow. All right. Well, with that, I think we can do a quick run through of our sponsors, right? Right? Ooh, right? Sure, why not? Sponsors like Exter, who makes quality compact wallets. <laughs> What's so funny okay. about that? Uh, there's, not, there's nothing funny about a nice, quality, super slim, quick card access wallet. Damn that straight. A button that fans out your cards for quick art card access. It's Stop laughing. From, I'm sorry. It's made for high quality materials. Talk to the like audience. It's, like Italian leather and space green aluminum and carbon fiber. And it's got RFID blocking plates to make sure that no one can swipe your cre- credit card information as they walk by. And if you want, stop you can swiping. Even, you can even get a tracker attached to it, so in the event that you lose your wallet, you can find it using your smartphone. It's pretty cool. And the extra sells other stuff too. They're starting to move more into the EDC market, so they're going to have like keychain. EDC stands for Everyday Carry. Yay! So uh, like keychains. Wait, and- EDC. Yes, yeah. yep. EDC. Isn't that the Electric Daisy Carnival, or is that not? I, I could. It could be many things. Yeah, EDC. yeah. Could be yeah. a lot of Electric Carnivals. Yeah, those yeah. carnivals stole the. Yeah, stole EDC the Las Vegas. I was gonna say that's the Electric <laughs> yeah. Daisy Carnival. I was no, like, no. I know it as a the, festival. They, they they came second. They're they're idiots for stealing the name. <laughs> <laughs> I've never has heard been. of Everyday Carry. What is that? It's been around for years. It's what you <laughs> what carry every mean? day. When yeah. I when I Google EDC, the first yeah. thing that shows up is EDC Electric Daisy Carnival. Nothing well, about well, Everyday Carry. Sarah, they, they let, let me ask you this, Sarah. Let me ask you. <laughs> what was invented first, pants or electronic music? That's right, pants. <laughs> if you have pants, you can carry things every day. Oh my god! I was, you know, because you guys have said that in the past, and I was so confused, and I never said anything. I was like, "You mean yeah. Electric Daisy Carnival?" No, I love that. That's so cool. That's what I thought, and I was like, no. "Okay, no, no. sorry, so Sarah. What would be under- isn't expanding no. into Electric Daisy what Carnivals. Would, what Marvin, would be Marvin, Marvin, everyday play the, carry? Play the drop, dude. No, you're so wrong." <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely wrong. (laughs) Oh my God. You're wrong. (laughs) What what would fall under that category? Like everyday carry, like what? Like Like, a purse, a wallet? Okay. So, like for me, my everyday carry is like my AirPods, right? Because, like, Mm -hmm. in my Um, wallet, my my nice wallet is going to be my everyday carry. So, like, my keys and then like, Whatever accessory you have with your keys is everyday mm-hmm. carry. My what knife. accessory do you have? Your knife. Okay. Well, my 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 uh, my little air tag for my keys. Mm-hmm. Oh, you have an air tag for your keys. Oh, yeah, and then and then like uh, my knife. Uh, I yeah. I carry a different knife every day if I can. You know, trying to mix it wow. up. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Back when uh I worked in the office. So uh, you actually I would carry have a, a knife. watch. A watch yeah? be considered yeah, e- a watch carry. Yeah. yeah. So you know, basically all your little accessories. Yeah, that there's a are, whole there's an awesome website called Everyday Carry. Uh, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, what are people carrying? And then I just go to the website and they're like, oh, that's cool. Like, oh, this guy carries like a pen. Oh, that's a pretty neat pen. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, you guys just need a purse. That's all. Yeah, just grab well, a purse, a purse. Here's the well, thing: is that <laughs> I was gonna go that way, but now every dude <laughs> I see in the streets is wearing. Uh, men's European Curiel. <laughs> mm. I, I just try not to carry anything more than I can in my pocket. Because then I'm just Marvin, like, this I is can't too many carry things. more because he's car- constantly carrying my bag. <laughs> yeah. That's Sarah, true. I posted, we share I a bag. The, <laughs> I posted the website. You'll see that everybody oh. carries very interesting things. Yeah. Wow. Right, like, if you become the holder of the bag, you might as well become a user of the bag. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I like their tag. A peek into the pockets of people oh. worldwide showcasing our everyday essentials. Yeah. But Do you want to peek listener. into the pockets? Dear listener, you shouldn't go to everydaycarry.com. Well, you should. Go on go on your own time. But during our time, 
go to shop.exter.com slash newbie. Yeah. Or just go to extra.com and use the offer code newbie when you check out for up to 25% off any order site wide. And that's an additional 25% off. So if you already see a sale on there, don't fret. So you can still use that link or that offer code and it'll add even more savings on top of additional sales. It's like you can get up to like 40% off sometimes. It's crazy. Uh, So it turns out that EDC doesn't stand for either of the things. It stands for extra discounts. Cool. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. You know what? 99% of this website is just knives. Well, yes. <laughs> well, it feels like. Who are we to judge? <laughs> Not Exter. She's talking about the other website. Yeah, the one that, cut, cut her mic off. Sorry. Cut her mic off. Exter. We love Everyday you, Exter. Everydaycarry.com. <laughs> Good night. Exter. Exter. Go to Everydaycarry. Exter has been, has been uh, featured on on the, on the Everyday Carry. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they, oh, they've yeah. Done, yeah. Let's yeah. see. Yeah. Wallets. Um... Well, and if you go to... Buy something from extra.com. Don't go to Ridge. Get, you can go to free shipping. Ridge. Well, well, I will. I will. Well, just to be honest, I, I legitimately think because nope. when I was looking for like small wallets before, now that you mentioned Ridge by name. Oh shit. Uh, Pelican has a fucking wallet. Yeah. 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 Fucking field wallet. That's, yeah. That's I, I just think I just thought that awesome. like Ridge is basically just two pieces of plastic together or like aluminum plates and they're like over a hundred dollars. And I was like, why is this so expensive? And then you look you look at an extra wallet and then it's like, oh, this is cheaper than a Ridge wallet, yet it has more features and more options. So I was like, why would I go for the Ridge? I feel like the Ridge really blew up because it was like one of the first like using social media slash YouTube everyday carry sites. So like mm-hmm. they really rode that train and was able to pump up their prices. But anyway, if you order from extra.com, you can get free shipping on any order of $50 or more and free returns within 45 days of receiving your order. So if you don't want it, you can just send it back. So again, that's shop.exter.com slash newbie, or just head on over to extra.com. That's E-K-S-T-E-R.com and use offer code newbie when you check out for up to 25% off additional off any order site wide and extra discounts. Cool. Yeah. 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 And express VPN. Listen, express VPN, long time bro of the podcast. You know why they're good. They're super fast, super reliable, super safe. And they work on pretty much every device you can think of. If you have a device, there's an app for it. And it actually works on Netflix streaming services and other streaming services. And if you go on over to expressvpn.com slash newbie Star Trek and you sign up for 12 months, they're going to give you an extra three months for free, which makes the entire deal 49% off, which is a pretty good deal for a VPN that's available at 160 locations spanning 94 countries. And if you don't like... The Express VPN for whatever reason, you can always just try it out because there's a 30 day money back guarantee. You can be like, hmm, maybe I do want the internet as raw as possible. I don't want to be yep. safe from it. Then you could just you know, return it. But in the event you do that, you know, you just do it. But, so again, that's expressvpn.com slash newbie Star Trek. And if you sign up for 12 months, you can get another three months for free. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, Denise. 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 Ricardo, could you please tell us what happened in this episode? You're so wrong. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this episode is not my favorite. Really? Yeah. Oh. Interesting. What? I, Interesting. I, like, I like half of it, but then I don't like the cute part. I, I, I don't oh. like you. I, I think we've talked about this. I can, just I so can uh, understand that. Yeah. I, 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 I can get it. I, I can get that <sighs> sentiment. Easy. Uh, they got to find a way to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> they, I don't understand. Like I, I go back and forth. Like sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, he's he's okay, he's okay. And, and like sometimes I'm like, I hate this guy. I hate this guy so much. <laughs> I'm very to- interested to see what part of Q annoyed you the most. It just like he takes us and like, okay, spoiler alert. I mean, you you should have seen the episode by now if you're yeah, listening yeah. to this. Yeah, but um, he, he there's huge potholes because like they they at the end he takes them they do the Robin Hood bit and then he comes mm-hmm. back and he never gives a speech. Oh well, that's less of a plot hole I think than more of a reality is kind of changed maybe 
It know? is kind of like a mystery. It's like I came back to an empty room. So did yeah. everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. And then the ship it clearly doesn't have any council members on board. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so not sure what happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, a plot like, hole, dude. It's less of a plot hole than I think is just unexplained because it doesn't like affect the plot. You know what I mean? It like felt a plot like two different, again, the A and B plot felt like two separate like why did we have to go into this whole like robin hood thingy and like well they wanted more period shenanigans (laughs) so the funny part is they they wanted to do a holodeck episode without having to say holodeck again so what happened is uh, originally the the plot of the episode was only supposed to be the kind of love triangle between picard vosh and q and it was just that and then Hmm. some producer i think it was ira stephen bear just said hey this is kind of boring. What if we just throw in like a, a romantic, like one of those classic romantic love stories? And he pitched uh, Camelot. And then someone else pitched, uh, oh, Michael Pillar pitched doing Robin Hood because the Kevin Costner Robin Hood movie had just come out. So mm. they were like, oh, well, let's just do Robin Hood. That's, op- that's, you let's know. make our own transmorphers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's, Literally the only reason they're good because the <laughs> plot has no reason to send. They don't even have like a, like a little inkling of no, like, they, they, there's they, like, absolutely they like a, no, like they read a story or they watched no, a play. No, or yeah, they, no foreshadowing. There, there's no foreshadowing of fucking Robin Hood <laughs> in the entire episode. No priming whatsoever. It's just yeah. like, Oh, they're wearing hats with those feathers now. Yeah. He literally, they literally just did it because they're like, well, Robin Hood's hot right now. Yeah. See, <laughs> this is what I mean whenever like they do this every goddamn time. It feels like a wishbone episode to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, hey, here are your no, here are your no, no. Here are no, your I'm cast sorry. members again. But wish the same bone, damn ones we always use. Wishbone did it uniforms. to entertain and teach children. <laughs> Star Trek does it to capitalize on bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. No, you're right. Wishbones wishbones better than that. Wishbones intentions are pure. We should be watching Wishbone, man. <laughs> a newbie Wishbone. So sick of just bringing him up and then hoping for better. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're we uh we end up in in Sherwood Forest for whatever reason. Yeah. So the episode <laughs> starts off and he's like very nervous about doing his stupid speech and like <laughs> the what's your face Deanna is like, "Oh, you're going to be fine. Just relax and go with your gut." Which I for once want somebody to go you're going to fail, dude. You're going to fail. <laughs> I, I want someone in a movie to lay doubt in people. Because <laughs> sometimes that's what really pushes people. That the, the someone be fair, not to believe Picard, in him. Uh, uh, Q kind of did that to Picard. But he's an asshole. That's why he yeah, did it to yeah. Picard. It wasn't because like, Picard, this actually isn't very good. You should really. Yeah. <laughs> and so he he's like going over his speech, going over his speech. And then he goes into his, his I guess, his, his room. His, not, it's not the ready room. It's like his. His quarters, his quarters, like his, his cabin. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. sees the, the the like the the dick statue or whatever it is the the horn the horgon the, the horgon yeah mm-hmm. uh, which is funny because Hor be be gone nope Hor be here um, <laughs> and so he picks it up and who is who's who's by the by you know very dimly lit by the door oh yeah the Brazilian Old. barbecue's back in business <laughs> yeah <laughs> Old Vaj. You know? Yeah. But then she just shows up and they never explain how. Nope. She's part nope. of the delegation. That's that's it. But, but she thought, wasn't cleared with yeah. everyone else. Like, Worf was like, how the fuck did she get on this ship? And I thought that's what made me think, oh, so she's, Q's posing as, as Vaj? This is interesting. And yeah. I just assumed he, that for a while. making out with Which is also Picard. what Sarah assumed, yeah. <laughs> and then, nope. No, it's just no, actually it's really, her. It's really her. She just and- mysteriously appeared on board because she's she's Catwoman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, she, she kisses Picard once. And then they put the Horgon down and then he, she really goes at it. And <laughs> there's... Then she really uh, lays the Horgon yeah. down. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing is that you see a lot of kisses on TV and movies and 98% of the time you're like, oh, this is a stupid... Like, it, it almost takes you out of the, a movie or show because you're like, oh, this is like a fake kiss. Like, mm. it's like, it's a TV kiss. Like, it, there's no... Mm. They had to do it for like, because the script called for it, you know? You right. Know? And... This seems like a real kiss. Like it oh, seems like a, it is. That's because it is. So at yeah. this time, but like they believe, fade out as they're really getting into each other's mouths. So when Vosh first showed up, her name is, uh, I'm forgetting her name now. Patrick. Uh, yeah. Jennifer Hetrick. When she first showed up, Patrick Stewart, the actor was very into her. 
to the point Wait, in real life in real life to the oh. point mm-hmm. where he was married and he divorced his wife to be with Jennifer Hetrick. What? Dang. And it is rumored that at one point they were also engaged to be married like secretly, but it appears to have been called off because they never got married. Oh, so it would have been they- cool if she took his first name and became <laughs> Jennifer Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they dated in real life. Yes, they, they were. For how long? Uh, at this point, it seemed they they were dating since the the first episode was made with them. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, in secret, and then it became wait, wait, more how, open. How old is she? Because I think I asked you this during the recording. Like, what's what are the what's the age difference we're talking? In uh, terms of I actual she, actors, yeah, yeah, I think she's ten years older. Um, because at that she's, end, then Patrick Stewart. Yeah, because Patrick Stewart at this time is he's only like mid forties. Well, uh, well, what, what, well, how old? Well, let's let's Google. Yeah, I'm looking up Jennifer uh, Hetrick right now in terms of um, uh, let's see. So Jennifer Hetrick is currently 64, and mm-hmm. Patrick Stewart. Oh, he's way older than that. Is 82. So he okay. she, she's <laughs> okay. she's 18 years younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Way off. Whoa, yeah. we were way. Yeah. You were way yeah. off, Marvin. I was a little oh, off. I was a little off. A little <laughs> off. My <laughs> gosh, you're absolutely wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, that one's yes. for you. You're absolutely wrong. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like wow. Um, <laughs> so uh, she was she was younger then. I guess. Yeah. Well, he, he was. A, remember when he, the whole point of Captain's Holiday was he told <laughs> the producers. Star Trek needs more fighting and it needs more fucking. So he got yeah, what he basically. wanted. <laughs> so, so what was the age in which they were dating? So he was like, say, forty something. So that I think it was like probably her... mid forties. So she was probably like mid twenties at that oh. point. Yeah, like twenty six or something. Oh my yeah. lord, Patrick. <laughs> well. When I tell you he's a bro, you don't believe me. <laughs> no, when we were watching this, you were like, oh, I'm pretty sure she's the same age. I'm like, um, no, I, don't I think said so. she's probably like 10 years younger. I didn't realize I was 18 years younger. Um, but yeah. No, and then you just said she was 10 years older. So no, I didn't. You, know. you did I didn't say, say older. she was. That is what you older. said initially. You, you did say older. And oh, I, was I meant initially you said that. I meant Patrick Stewart was like ten years old. I yeah. ne- he, I always meant he was older, not she was older. Rewind the tape. Yeah. You said yeah, yeah, yeah. she yeah. was old, ten years older, and I was okay, like, I believe uh, that's what you meant, but that isn't what you said. Yeah, that's that's what I meant. I always meant that she, he was the older. Of the, okay, according of to the a source called Math, uh, Jennifer Hetrick would have been about 33 years old. Oh, okay. Okay. And at airing date. Okay, okay. So or 32. Wow. Because it wasn't her birthday yet. So that chemistry was really real. Oh, I yeah. I feel it. I it's also feel why it when you watch Captain's Holiday and they like have like the, the sex scenes, you're like, oh, they're definitely into it. <laughs> like, Good, good. You know, use it. Yeah, use it, essentially. So um, they, they end up doing it and- um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The next time, the next, the next day, they're having breakfast, and uh, and so the, the 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 doorbell rings, <laughs> and he's like, oh, and immediately he's like, ah, oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> and his 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 old older lady comes comes in, mm-hmm. and she's like, oh, I didn't know you had a visitor. Oh my god, <laughs> and she's wearing like a weird. She's not wearing like yeah. she's wearing like a really she's nice sweater. Wearing like a sweater. Yeah, yeah. Did you see though? He like, like pops up. He pops up and like tries to hot. Like tries yeah. Yeah. to get her yeah. to not look in. He's yeah, like, oh, yeah. um, oh, he's like, oh shit. Uh. <laughs> I had a lady over, which to me, honestly, this this is like a window into like more of their personal lives. Like I didn't know she was like going to his quarters. Like Beverly yeah. was like, oh hey, like she's she's his fuck like buddy piece. <laughs> well, I don't know like, if they're going that far, but they're definitely yeah, on, they are. on a she's, schedule. Marvin, if she's showing up for tea in the morning like this and she's that surprised. Uh, yeah. I, I hate know. to tell you that's, that's what's going on. I don't know. Maybe. I agree. I agree with Sarah. <laughs> it's absolutely what's going on. And she goes, she said she goes every morning or she says often, often we share tea together, which means, Often we have a little fuck session before work. 
I would it believe it more if they didn't like hype up minor romantic moments between them. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It just seems like when it comes to them and romantic tension. No, no I I think I think it's fine. I, th- I think I think everybody knows they hook up sometimes, and then when it gets serious and they're going to have a romantic moment, they think, oh, they're going to come out because everybody knows it on the ship. They're like, oh yeah, yeah. but it's more like, oh, are they going to come out and tell us and not mm-hmm. we're, we're going to stop the charade that we don't know what's going on. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I, that's I, why they hype it up because to me they're mm-hmm. on like a more like less intense level than Deanna and Riker to me Deanna Riker is like they are definitely fuck buddies they're just fucking whenever they have fun I, I, Patrick Stewart like I feel like John Luke is has to be below that like I because he's so much so more uptight so if they're not fucking why did he get all like flustered when she came over and you know like because he does like Beverly no but that's yeah, the because, face of someone who's they used like to. I got yeah. caught. I I fuck you and I fuck her. And <laughs> like as of this episode, I believe fully that they have had sex before. But yes. I don't know if they're Often. actively doing it now. Yes, I think so. Especially because they go on their. I mean, Wesley came from walk, somewhere, <laughs> which Ricardo will get into. But they do go on a little gossiping walk. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So basically, Beverly's like, "Oh, who is this?" And he's like, "Oh, Vaj is like surprised that she doesn't know who she is." And and he's like, "Oh, I've heard a lot about you, Beverly." So basically, she's heard about everybody on the fucking ship. Fucking mm-hmm. turns out Picard is a chatty Kathy, <laughs> <laughs> and he just to- he, he basically he's like, "Oh, I'm a very private man, but I've told you everything about my ship. You could have been a spy. <laughs> you could have yeah. everything about it was the access code to plenty ship. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but but I'm a very private man so i call yeah. bullshit on that dude um mm-hmm. and then and then he's like oh well i, I have to go and have basically go. <laughs> beverly's like oh uh, you know they, they agree to vaj is like oh maybe you give me a ship uh, a tour of the ship and she's like all right and even like it, even vaj is like fucking with him like he's yeah. like oh, don't oh, worry yeah. i won't i won't i won't make you look bad you pervert <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and like they, they're doing a tour and you know what's so crazy is is when you're not wearing your uniform, does all rank just go away? Because she doesn't call him, like, mm-hmm. she just calls him John Luke. She always Sean, calls him John Luke mm-hmm. in, like, private. Whenever yeah. there's no other crew yeah, members around, she, she always calls him John Maybe Luke. Maybe that's, that's, like, true. more of, like, an endearing, like, oh, you know, John Luke. I think that's John why. Luke. I think same for, it's like, I think it's also why, you know, when Deanna and Riker are alone, they tend to call each other Imzadi. So, I think it's. Wait, what is that? What is their pet names again? Lombada. Uh, <laughs> Imzadi is beta zoid for beloved. So yeah. does he call her that too? Yes. They call yeah, each other that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. He's that's pronounced so it differently weird. every so often, but he has. Yeah, yeah. So she walks in and immediately fucking Riker's hard as shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he's like He runs over. Yeah, he's, like, he's like he's like Whoa. He, he does a thing where like in the mask. Remember, leading remember, the, way. remember yeah. the the mask when he turns yeah. into a yeah. wolf and then the eye yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she she is she's the Cameron Sarah Diaz to his mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just had this image in my mind. <laughs> and so and so she she and then she's like, "Oh, get us some drinks," and leaves her alone. And you should know, you don't leave a woman, uh, a, a, an available woman, alone. Yeah, the presence of fucking Riker, dude. Because he's like, come over here. He's like the goddamn predator, dude. He sees, he sees something, he hunts it. You know what I mean? He's, he's invisible, and then he just mm-hmm. shows up, dude. He, he just like appears. With oh, here's that. Handsome the eyes, the, the, those blue eyes, and that beard. <laughs> and then he shows up. What does up, he dude. say? He said, like, the, the cosmos is perfect or something like that. He's all the, 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 that view of inf- the infinite is perfect or something like that. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. He, that's what she says. Yeah. I suspect that. Riker wears Sex Panther cologne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where like the cologne's very exotic and it's hard to find. And it's like, this mm-hmm. is an old relic. He's not an axe of, guy. He's not a, he's not no, a bullshit no. axe guy. He's yeah. like, he's like this, this isn't made from the replicator. You sure he wouldn't oh. use bod? No, he, he's like, <laughs> he's like 10 men died getting me this, getting me this bottle. The bottles um, of bod were the worst. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he says and, eternity never looks so lovely. That's well, that's, his, that's his pickup line. And, and she's eternity like, eternity <laughs> never looks so lovely. Yeah, yeah. And, then and then she's and like, the, <laughs> and she's like, she's like, oh, you must be Riker. Uh, <laughs> right away. Away. And he's and he's like, really? This piece of shit won't tell me where he was born, but he told you fucking everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> he he mentioned a, a Robert or Robert or some sort of like a Rob or something. Like that. Um, and so he immediately, for some reason, Riker's like, "Oh well, I've, I mean, if he's been inside of her, I guess we can show her the ship." 
and, and he just takes her. She, he just takes her to the oh. bridge. Oh, yeah. the best fucking... part. The best part is that oh, she yeah. says, "Oh, you, he does a good imitation of you," oh, which yeah, implies yeah. that yeah. John Luke's game is entirely based on his observations of yeah. writer. Yeah. <laughs> so one way to I, take it. I took that as like in behind closed doors he like makes fun of Riker like, no no oh, Riker. no no, no. I, I, to, to I'm me, he was sexy put, and your no, your 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 eyes I, look I, like this is stars how I sit in eternity yeah. yeah no to, to me my to me my back hurts he, so I'm gonna leave yeah. <laughs> oh. oh no I'm gonna put my leg I up loved, on this table I love Deanna Troy oh my god <laughs> oh I'm but jealous. I won't marry her because of my yeah. stupid career <laughs> uh no I think I think he meant to like like oh he basically like he he takes after oh my god sorry i burped right into the mic um he, <laughs> he steals riker's him. moves yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he steals his okay. moves he you know? steals his his lines his pickup yeah. lines yeah yeah but yeah, yeah. they're in so good, good way. they're in so a good way. Yeah. worthy yeah. 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 of being yeah. stolen and then he takes her to the bridge and then immediately th- see this is the way you fucking do it mm-hmm. you know who's who's on point fucking a wharf dude he's like who the fuck is this dude yeah yeah <laughs> yeah uh, there's no clearance for this shit dude fucking, who's this? yeah he won't even shake her hand yeah no again and Worf is the voice of reason. Like he's like, yeah. 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 well, you know what? I actually don't understand the handshaking part. Like he's gonna get something from her. He's just kind of like, I won't even engage with you. He's just distrustful. Hey man, Jordy yeah. almost turned into a weird gecko lizard man just a couple of episodes <laughs> yeah. ago because he got yeah. within Worf's the vicinity like, not, of some invisible predator people. Yeah. He's like, this like place, I'm not taking any chances. This, yeah, man, this he place is right. full of plagues. Like yeah. I don't want to touch anyone. Yeah. Like and then and then she's like, oh, is this where Picard sits? And then she goes and puts her fucking dirty fucking ass shoes. <laughs> On, on the seat, dude. <laughs> and you Ricardo crazy. would be like his fucking shoes on the chair. No, but that was yeah. good. like she sat on his chair <laughs> and like fu- puts her feet up. I'm like, and Worf's face is like, holy fucking shit. I, I felt like I felt like that scene in in, um, in the wedding singer where he's like, please take off my Van Halen shirt before the jinx of the band and they break up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just take off your fucking shoes on, on my seat, dude. Uh, you're gonna, she 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 really does a Rick James on that thing. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, Fuck your couch. Um, and she gets up and she's like, oh, you know, yeah, I'm beginning a tour and and like there's clearly like. She's saying goodbye, like I'll see you later. And clearly, she like she's looking at his mouth and she wants to like kiss him, but he's like, "Don't do it, don't do it here. You're gonna embarrass <laughs> me in front of everybody." Um, <laughs> Man, she's not someone to be embarrassed about. No, no, uh-uh. but but he, but he is because he's so private, you know, yeah. so private. I he guess, told her everything. But, I mean, it is interesting that she can just come in on the Enterprise, put her fucking feet up on the yep. chair, and just waltz into the bridge. Like it's amazing how much like clearance she has even though she's not like an official girlfriend she's well, she's sexy like, enough she's the side piece. Like, yeah, man. <laughs> and then and then she she basically this is just like on the coast of concordia where the girlfriend came onto know, the ship dude. <laughs> yeah, man. this is this could have they, if they crashed the ship this could have been brought exactly this up an episode too concordia. early yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so so basically she tells everybody like oh you you never heard of me and you know like mm. like uh what was it becky with a with a good hair Becky with the good hair, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and call him Becky with the good and, and, hair. And, he, and then everyone's like, "No, we never heard of you." And then she talks to Deanna, and she's like, we, "He's never. He's a private man. He never talks to, to anybody." <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, well, I know everything about you guys." I guess he's not private, you know, when I'm what? down on his privates. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, and so and so she gets ver- she gets like pissed and she's like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Why are you not telling wharf. people about me? Why aren't you telling people that we fuck, dude?" And he's like, "Because uh, I don't I don't fucking tell, you know." <laughs> and right, then- but when she walks over to him though. The wharf looks at her and goes, "Nice legs." Yeah, <laughs> like out human. of nowhere. No, yeah, he says that she has nice legs for a human. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he's into the hose. Okay, I do yeah. want to know. Like, do you feel like Picard should have? Like, is she? Does she have a point no, to be mad? No, nope, no point. I think. I think it is a bit odd that there is no mention of her at all. Like, like entirely. I, under- I understand the reaction of being upset, but holding on to it might be something that I would kind of disagree with. I think he technically has reasons for being more, he is the captain. So it's hard. Right. And he's the captain 24 seven. So it's hard for him to like, let his guard down. But I think Picard is also a bit uptight. So I think it does it is a little weird that he never told anyone ever 
about well Bosch, to me i know? think it depends how serious is their relationship like did they just fuck on that last planet or are they calling every day no is this is the first coming? time yeah yeah like have they talked like they've not if talked, that's the yeah. case then i totally understand why he hasn't really told anyone about her because it's like you're not a part of you know you're not you're not dating you were just someone I yeah, fucked yeah. on vacation, you know? Like, I don't know if Can I would anyone, I, I just thought of something. Does anyone remember whether or not that Rice episode in which Fosh was introduced, did they ever say anything like what happens in Riza stays in Riza, like Vegas or something? No, they don't no, say no. anything like that. Okay, no. okay. Because if that Riza has been the Vegas, case, dude. in fact, Riza, Riker- Riza is more like, um, <laughs> more like uh, what's, a, what's a place where people fuck and then they just leave? Mm. Amsterdam? Yeah. There's a couple I, islands I like that. Yeah. There's like, yeah. yeah. Because Riker Man. actually loves to recount Burning tales of what he's done village. at Rise Up. Olympic Village. It's like yeah. the Olympic Village. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Ry- Riker will talk about it all day. So it's not like you're supposed to keep it private or anything. But like, it, you yeah. know, at what point are you supposed to be telling your coworkers? And, you know, no, no, I don't I, think I would necessarily tell my coworkers and my family and friends about like a fuck buddy. You know? No, no, like, I agree. I, I think I don't think it's like something like you tell everybody in the ship. But I do find it slightly odd that it has never come up at all, especially with someone like Riker, who's pretty inquisitive about stuff like that. So yeah, it, he would have been that, all over like trying to get the details from him. Exactly. So I think like that's Picard going out of his way to not mention anything. Yeah. And I can understand why Vosh would be upset, but I think I can also understand why <sighs> Picard is just like, oh, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm a captain. So they both have a point. And yeah, I'm a captain don't and kiss captains, and tell. Yeah, captains don't <laughs> fuck. <laughs> captains don't fucking tell. I so. I I I think it's his business if he wants to tell her or not. Tell everybody or not. It's it's really nobody's business. I agree. Um yeah. and then so he goes he goes to his quarters or his office and, and he's like he's still iffy about the speech and he goes in there and Q's there and he starts to fuck with him. Q's like, fucking Hey dude, Q. this is like like the old trope, like if I save you, I owe you a life debt. If you save me, I owe you a life debt and like we gotta get this over with. And like <laughs> the car could have been like, Okay, we'll come back, let me think about it, come back in a week and we'll figure this out. But like that's how easy it could have been, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and for Q, what's a week? What's a week to Q? Yeah. But no, he's like, uh, get the fuck out of here, you fucking bitch. Uh, and Q, of course, is like, well, now I'm not leaving, dude. Could have been easy. He's just like, oh, this is really nice. <laughs> Yo, Q, uh, thank you for the kind offer. I'll, yeah. How about I'll, I'm a little busy right now. Yeah. I'm not even on that, dude. Else. Just go, man. Uh, this is a this is a head scratcher, my man. And I don't have a lot of hair on my head. So give me give me a week. Give me a human week. Come back and uh, we'll figure this out together, dude. We'll get yeah. some fucking salad. Salads and you know, <laughs> Ooh, salad. Unlimited salad sounds like a good, yeah, good, yeah, good reward. If you can um, that. Yeah. So she Vaj is in his in his now in his personal uh, quarters, and mm-hmm. she's got. Uh, a, the grifting equipment where she's going to steal a fucking <laughs> grift. She's, got, she's got her space Indiana Jones equipment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know what she's going to do with just those two items. It doesn't look like very much. Eh, she, something. <laughs> it's like a metal detector and like a, you know, I don't know. And, they, uh, a they precious lo- extract door. I know. They have they have a lover spat and fucking Q sneaks up and, and fucking takes a, he's a pervert dude. He takes a, he's a peeping Tom. Mm-hmm. And he, mm-hmm. he like looks in on Vaj and he's like, ah, oh, I like this chick dude. So anyway, he goes to Picard and he's like, "Hey, dude, like, uh, you know, w- w- your your speech is shit, dude. Why don't I? Why don't I take you to to this pl- planet that you're that you're going to give a speech about, and we'll fucking do it up there, dude." And he's like, "No, no, I don't want that shit." And then he gives he's about to give the speech the next day, mm-hmm. and and then he they all disappear and go to Robin Hood Land, in fucking <laughs> Westworld. And it feels out of so nowhere. random. It yeah. feels so this, random. This well, goes nowhere and it pisses hats. me off. Yes. <laughs> I, it goes nowhere. I don't like it. And this is where, uh, like, this didn't need to happen. Some idiot watched fucking Robin Hood and was like, oh, let's fucking yeah. put Robin Hood in the fucking show. Um, <laughs> and it's silly. It's dumb. And I don't like it. The, the only thing that it brought us was, was Worf saying, what was, what's the line? I, I am not, not a merry, merry man. man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Worf in the, in the, yeah. in the Robin Hood in world the was like amazing. brightest red costume imaginable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love Girl, it. All, only he could have pulled it off. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, they put Deanna in some fucking tights, dude. Oh, yeah. And so, th- basically, Picard is like a freaking really old-ass fucking Robin Hood. <laughs> <laughs> and and Q, is, Q is like the, the sheriff, right, of Nottingham? Yeah, he's the sheriff. Yeah, Q is the and, sheriff. And, uh, the, of course, uh, Vaj is, is Mary and Magdalene or Mary the whore, whatever <laughs> her name is. And, uh, and so... 
he has to save her or not save her, but she's going to be executed the next day. And yeah. this horn dog is like trying to marry her. And she like, it, 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 this is stupid. I don't know why we're, I'm recounting this. this is, <laughs> it's fucking angry me. Um, the king guy like wants to marry her. But- yeah. The king guy wants to marry yeah. her. Cause, cause she grifts him. Yeah. She, she tell you what, dude, she's a good grifter. I'll give her yeah. that. She she's a Which good is why the he show. kind of like likes her. Yeah, and she's a yeah, good grifter yeah. in light in real life, dude. She grifted <laughs> Picard, dude. She and grifted said, Patrick wife. Stewart's dick. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Sir Patrick Stewart. It's a dick. Wasn't a sir yet. Wasn't a sir yet. No, it will be. Yeah. By the way, shout out not not to the listen, but props to all the dudes that are, and, and and ladies and dudettes that are uh, returning their knighthoods because fuck that bitch. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, the are queen, there actually the people queen. doing that? Yeah, there, there, there are. How yeah. do they Wait, do really? that? How do you return your knighthood? That's that's cool. You can, you, you can, can like, whatever, like the thing they give you, they're, they're returning it and going. I don't want. Wait, it. Oh, oh, there's an actual understand. object. Yeah, I, I think you understand. get like, a, what is like this? a letter or a like plaque. for Sir Sir or Dame Judy Dench. Oh, or people were ret- oh, like literally Stewart. their knighthoods. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Knighthoods. yeah. Who else uh, is there? There's pa- Sir Patrick Stewart, Judy Ben Kingsley. Dame. Oh Ben King, okay. Who else? Sir Ben Kingsley. There's this is a bunch well, of Patrick Stewart like, returned it too. Oh okay. No no no. Did I'm he not saying really? that they did. No, I'm not saying that they did. I'm saying no. there's a couple of oh. actors who have though. Oh okay. Uh, I want to say uh, shit. The guy but who played I'm trying Nightcrawler. To think who else on X-Men has 2. been? Okay. Oh, um, who else has been knighted or like? What's the actor in, in X Men Two? Uh, a lot. Uh, oh that guy. Yeah. Um, he, he he just returned to his his knighthood. Actually, uh, what's his name? Not Oliver Stone. The comedian. He has a show on HBO, uh, J- something Oliver. Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver. Mm-hmm. He's uh, been knighted. He was knighted. No. He, well, no, 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 no. They, they, they called Alan him. Cumming told him was the guy returned. Alan Cumming returned. Yeah, it. that's, right, um, that's right. Oliver. They called him to give him the knighthood because they were going to knight him, mm-hmm. and he said, "Fuck off." He basically said, "Fuck oh. off." Yeah. Um, oh, and, Ringo Starr. Wait, hold on. Who else has been knighted? A bunch of people. If you're British and you've done shit, you've been knighted, dude. Yeah. Um, oh, and, uh, Paul, Mac- Paul McCartney? Yeah. And so basically a bunch of people who that are younger that have been knighted have been like, fuck off. Here, take it back. Oh, David yeah. Bowie turned it down back in the yeah. day. Yeah. Really? It makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. So did John Lennon oh, and Michael George Kane. Harrison. Okay. Yeah. Stephen yeah. Hawking. Oh, okay. oh. Oh, Elton John, of course. How could we Jim Broadbent that? turned it down. Okay. Oh, and Alan Rickman. What a dude. He, he, that guy Jim rules. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Alan Rickman. So f- the more you read about Alan Rickman in general, like the more interesting he gets as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, cool. Um, uh, uh, just badass okay. shit that like they're returning. I, I just want to, I, think I wanted to take great, time actually to return it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, fuck those people actually throw it away. How yeah. can you throw compete with these top tier skills? <laughs> 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 I've been to three Evos. <laughs> <laughs> And so, so basically, uh, he, he saves her, and they, you know, Q's like, "Oh, uh, there's a spat good for back you. and forth." There's yeah. some funny stuff because, like, Data's Friar Tuck, yeah, and then Bever- uh, not Beverly, uh, Deanna. I love Data's hair. The like yeah, little, the little is, bowl, like yeah, the, the elderly man balding haircut. The That's drape, just like the yeah, yeah. And then Deanna's trying to practice archery, and then she yeah. shoots him, and she then he's Data. like, "Whatever, I'm a robot." <laughs> Man, and Deanna's then, form for archery is is horrendous. It's she can't really pull bad. A string well, to save her life. Yeah. They're trying to. They probably were like, look really horrible doing this. And we can speak with authority. We've been to a Renaissance fair. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yes, and we did try to do this, and I was awful at it. Um, um, but you did a better job than Deanna did. Yeah. And then they they returned to 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 the ship. And then fucking uh, all of a sudden, so Vaj doesn't come back right away, right? She takes a yeah. little bit of time to get back. No one comes and, back right and away. Guess like what, the dude? Whole guess what, dude? Gone, so. Because he's trying to fuck her, dude. He's trying to fuck her, dude. Yeah, I think trying- it is. I think it is very directly implied that Q wants to have a relationship with her. Yeah, and, then, and he's uh, like, yeah, she he's, takes he's, such they come back and he's like, oh, in her. she comes back and she's wearing her Indiana Jones fucking gear. It, it, she's yeah. wearing a really big hat. She's wearing like a like a Lord Helmet hat when they're going yeah. to the desert <laughs> and, with like. And the, she, the like piece of fabric draping yeah, down. Yeah. And she's mm-hmm. like, hey, I'm, I formed a new partnership. And, they, and I mean, this is really sketchy because she was in love with Picard and she was all jealous. But now she's with Q because yeah. basically, and again, this is this is the only good part I like is that she's a good con woman and he's he's a, good, a con man. 
Q is. Yeah. So that's yeah, naturally good partners. I, I, yeah. I, I like it actually. I do yeah. like the resolution, but I don't I didn't need the Peter Pan shit, dude. Or whatever the fuck <laughs> it was, dude. <laughs> the Peter Pan and the Hundred Acre Wood shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need that shit, dude. Leave that to Kevin Costner, dude. And his yeah, British accent, dude. That. He's got a beautiful British accent. But at least the men in tights. Yeah, dude. Uh the you card know. looks sexy as Robin Hood though. No, apparently you like that uh, little mustache. Yeah, I like it. He's cute. He's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, uh, Deanna Troy's actor, Marina Sirtis, thought everyone looked really great in tights. And she was like, ooh. Oh, I think yeah, everyone looks good. super Aww. cute. Yeah. I think everyone looks hot. Yeah, everyone does look like, they, they you know, the, the costumes are fun. Patrick you know? Stewart yeah, yeah. looks like yeah. a little it's hottie running see, around. It's fun to see Worf, Worf and Jordy like, stand out the most as looking odd in their clothes. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I didn't do like her costume. Reasons. I didn't like uh, Vash's yeah, Princess they intentionally costume. make they make it funny, very funny duddy on purpose. It's like yeah. she could have they could have dressed her like a little better, more yeah. flattering for her, I think. But well, that's how they address the time, dude. It's very yeah. time accurate. I know. Yeah, I, just, I, like I, don't like, I didn't like the color. <laughs> like Fire um, Data's bald cap is so obvious. Yeah. It makes you yeah, wonder. Really it's like, is, yeah, is yeah. that like supposed to be a bald cap, or are they really trying to say he's bald? Yeah. yeah. And so uh, basically. Uh, he she's using him to like steal all the, it's like a time heist she's gonna steal all these goddamn treasures from from all these timelines because q's gonna take her there and and try yeah. to fuck her you know in all mm-hmm. these places mm-hmm. and then basically he's like oh you, you can kiss her goodbye and he like goes and then he peeps on them again comes back and he's like oh, I'll, I'll just close my eyes uh you fucking pervert uh and he kisses her goodbye and he's like oh, and he and then I guess Picard didn't really like her because he was like, all right, then get the fuck out of here, dude. Yeah. Kick he's, rocks. He, I think, I think he has like peaks and valleys with her. He's like, damn, you're really hot. And when we're fucking, it's great. But the moment I nut, like the clarity comes in and I'm like, yeah. wow, you're kind of an asshole to hang out. With. He, he, so, does, 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 does yeah. he come back with a kid later? And, and like kids, like, they can't Space do Jesus? that plot over and over again. Ricardo. They Space can't Jesus? keep doing that. Plot. They should, <laughs> they should do it over and over. Every and single then, time yeah, the kid and, should and be then, one year old. And then, and then, and well, and, and, well, then they don't know who the dad is. Is it Q? Is it is it Picard? Oh, Q is. having a kid would be such an interesting idea. Well, no, because you don't know who it is. You're like, does he have powers? Does the kid have powers? And like, oh, it's like it's like the plot yeah, of Superman yeah, yeah. Returns. You yeah. don't know if Lois is a kid has superpowers or not. And then, and, and, and you then don't turns know, out he does. You yeah. don't know until until <laughs> later that you're like, it's Q's kid, dude. This guy nutted in her. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't. I thought it's. I think it was really shocking to me, and I was telling Marvin this when we were watching it. Like, it's so interesting that Picard is, because isn't she a? She's a criminal. Like everything yes. she does is is. But is she criminal. sucks him good. That's why. But like, why, <laughs> Picard is a captain of the Enterprise. Like, is is he okay with? Aligning himself with a criminal, it, like, like he's she's a like, straight up criminal. Like, like she is she, on the she's, run. She's a criminal. She's yes, Catwoman is a like criminal. Like, I don't like, get why yeah. he's like Cat, Catwoman is a criminal too. And Catwoman, yeah, Catwoman is oh, a criminal okay. too. So right. it's a kind of like a Thomas Crown affair. Like she's she's like nobility, not nobility, but she's she has a high ranking, but she's also a criminal. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So because which yeah. and then but then I also feel like I don't. She also makes this line in the um in that show is like, I don't know if I fully believe if she likes uh, Picard or if she's just an opportunist. So yeah, I'm just not but- sure. But then she says when kind of Picard questions her, she's like, Oh, you know, I, no one ever believes me. That's the problem with being like a, a, a good liar. con a liar. person. A liar is just like, no one ever believes me. I'm like, does she, do we really feel that she loves Picard or is it more? Uh, well, she's like, an, he's, I mean, it's, it, he's convenient. I think it's clearly, I mean, let her go. So clearly, he doesn't respect her to keep the, or else he would have been like, no, stay. And, and I, I love you. And mm. like, but he's like, ah, oh, fuck off. That's fine. I don't give yeah, a shit. Even, even back in captain's holiday, his offer to have her join the ship was pretty half hearted. He was yeah. like, I could give you a position on the ship. No, but my question wasn't about, wasn't you. her, wasn't about him. It's about her. Like, does she like Picard? I, or- I think, I think she finds him fun, but probably will never like want to commit like a anything. good fuck, but not like, something yeah. she wants yeah. to like and she probably like does care about like she i think some of her action show she does care about him like you know later she attempts to write that letter to the friends to the merry men to be like oh save picard please you know she doesn't have to do that if she, all she cared about was herself but she definitely tried oh, yeah it's it's catwoman through and through every trope's there it's like yeah, the, yeah. it's yeah. the yeah. Catwoman so trope. Cold, yeah. Okay. you really do care and the, she's a bad know. girl at heart but she loves Batman. but then she she's yeah. a bad girl and she goes off with the bad man right you know yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, she, she just likes, gr- you, know? you know, she just likes shiny shit too much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, She'll- and that's what it seems. Like, but it was interesting to see Picard just so kind of like, all right, I guess you'll go now. Okay, and bye. to Q, who he seems to hate very much. Like the love of your life. Is gonna go I off with know Q? If she was. She would be the love of his life. Yeah, well, I, 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 I would. The I would fuck say of she, your life. I guess. Not even <laughs> that. I would say like like he. She was fun, but he, again, I think I feel like that's why he likes Riker so much is because they both agree. Like, eh, like having a family is cool, but like we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do it for the love of the game, dude. You know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. And I, and I've think, never seen Picard kiss somebody and be this like sexually like well, aroused that, well, in an episode. It was, it was real. That's real. Because that's yeah. real. Yeah. It yeah. looks that's, really that's, real. Like this last scene of them kissing goodbye, I was like, ooh, yeah. this is getting steamy. That's Patrick oh my Stewart. God, yeah, right? and he's got a he's got a smirk on his face. You're oh, like, yeah. oh, this is sexy. Totally I, sexy. I I hated the Robin Hood shit and I hated Q and I'm only gonna give this a five. It's just middle of the road. Mm. C Okay. All right. Mm. I'm actually gonna be way more generous. I'm gonna give it an eight. Get uh, out of here, dude. I, ac- I actually don't mind the Rob I, f- I I do find the fact that we enter Robin Hood out of nowhere really stupid. Mm-hmm. But I think the Robin Hood shenanigans are kind of fun. Uh, I like that it's an excuse for a lot of stupid things to occur. What's funny is that during that last scene where um, it looks like uh, Picard and Vosh are about to be executed, and it turns out the crew snuck in as the priests. Uh, yeah, and they do the Mortal Kombat hood thing. Yeah, they do the hood <laughs> thing. And then they all sword fight, right? But the women yeah. don't sword fight. The women just smash yeah. faces on people's heads. Yeah. Well, so the funny part is, so we know Patrick Stewart is trained for sword play, right? Mm-hmm. So is Marina Sirtis and Gates McFadden. Wait, they should both? let them fight. They should yeah, let them fight. They are actually the only other two actors who are trained for sword play. <laughs> oh, that's such bullshit. And man. the rest of the actors were not like uh LeVar Burton, Riker, Data, they have no idea how to do sword play. They that's should've, why they were that, doing that, bullshit moves. That, that, <laughs> that's what, that they should have done that. It would have been so much funnier if they I know, just done it, the, it like would have been really switch. interesting. Yeah, but they even asked on set why we know how to do sword fighting. It's why because won't they're you women. Have? Well, well the, that's exactly why the, the producer told them, well, it's not period accurate. Accurate. And you're like, motherfucker, you're in like what? a Q simulation. Yeah, that is the yeah, stupidest wait, period reason. Period accurate? What the what fuck are we talking about? We're in ass, space. Like, what, what stupid ass about? Assassin's Creed bullshit? <laughs> Oh my god! It's just because they were like, "Well, you're women. Women we got can't." Ten steps forward. It's way harder to animate women <laughs> fighting so swords. Many steps back. <laughs> that would have been so much more interesting. Here's what you can do: you can yeah. throw plates on people's heads. Yeah, that's what women yeah. would do. Yeah, but uh, so yeah. dumb. Oh well, but that's what well, I think. It really should be standard to pr- to like teach or train people in fencing in the future because the TNG crew does get into sword fights like a lot more often than you'd think. Yeah, yeah, even in the fucking More J.J. J. Abrams I. movies, they come up with sword fights for them More to often do. than you, Dan? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I get in a sword fight at least once a week. I mean, well, then shit. Yeah. <laughs> Dan is a lap station, so his sword fighting doesn't happen as often. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, actually, you're the only one who's actually done, like, kumdo, so... <laughs> That's like, true. Like, you're the only one who's actually handled, like, swords with purpose. And won tournaments, so... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Hi, Marvin, I didn't know you were such a sword fighter. Uh, I would probably get my ass kicked now. <laughs> uh, my stamina is all gone. Like I, what my the only the only way I used to win stamina a lot for is sword fighting. No more. <laughs> Is because I I would just like have there's no time limit so I would just have a long I would just have a lot of stamina and then uh, yeah <laughs> you used to leave so many bodies in your wake <laughs> but no longer. Oh my god. Uh, I would probably give it a, I give it a seven because Picard is sexy (laughs) and he's cute in this. That's fair. It's a fair reason to give him reading. Yeah. Yeah. There's no other reason required. That's fine. Yeah. Cool. So I thought it was a really good episode, but, um, yeah, I also didn't get the, I didn't get the, uh, Robin Hood stuff as much. So yeah, like I, I, f- I feel like I don't know Robin Hood the lore like very well. I just remember ba- like very basic things from back when I used to watch the Disney one. Mm. So I could remember the Sheriff of Nottingham and Friar Tuck. Yeah, that's about it. I didn't and Maid Marian. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was good. I thought it was interesting to see like this side of Picard 
And Vash, I do wonder if she'll come back and if that whole Q thing will happen, you know, like what what else will happen there. So Yeah, it's a it's a plot line that I feel like they could, you know, extend further and and have some fun stuff with. So I'm I'm hoping Vash does come back because yeah. Yeah, I do too. It'd be fun. That is cool that they were together in real life. Oh. Is yeah. it cool? <laughs> He kind yeah, of like, he, he was married at the time. You're yeah, saying, he right? ended his marriage, like divorced his wife, and had an affair in order to do I'll it. I'll have so. to look into that more. But I mean, they make a good looking couple for sure. Yeah, that is interesting, though. I guess maybe if, if she's the person they had, you know, that broke up the marriage, or you know, he had an. I don't know if he had an affair. Maybe not. I mean, maybe it was just timing, and it actually um, worked out. But okay, so yeah, I gave a seven. All right, I'm actually with Marvin on this one. I would actually give it an eight as well. But um, I'll give some shout outs to the fact that I don't know if this happened before I noticed it this episode, but John Luke has an actual blanket now. Oh, did we see his it's, bed? It's not just a stupid Mylar space blanket. Okay. They're, it's they're, a nice blanket that looks comfortable. Their furniture but, is getting more and more practical as time goes on. Yes, yes. So good on them. Good on them. Um, I also noticed like back when uh, Q says like if I had known sooner that you know a woman could be your downfall et cetera et cetera I would have appeared as a female and it's like but they <laughs> already cast me John Delancey so yeah 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 you're gonna be stuck with me forever yeah and he'll but never- then that made me th- yeah that made me think like what if they like recast Q as Jennifer Hetrick from there on just they could with- I mean yeah they could have cool. done that if they wanted to and it would have been like a very interesting dynamic I from actually there, but- thought that for a little bit I actually for part of the episode I thought I'm like. What if she's actually just Q and that's not her? And he just that was my initial assumption as well because they did not explain how she appeared. You see the title of the episode on the screen. Yeah, so I feel like it's a very fair thing to assume. Yeah. Um, I also want to give shout outs to the nearly Monty Python gag where they hear horse hooves like approaching without being able to see anything. And it cuts back and forth a bunch of times and suddenly Q appears. Kind of oh. reminded me of the Lancelot thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and also when Picard is trying to drag uh, Vosh out of the out of the window and he just keeps growling at her. <laughs> <laughs> that seems pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot of like fun moments that the, the, the scenario justifies. It's just, it's hard to justify the scenario itself when like they just come out of no, like, why would Q no, choose yeah, like this? The whole conceit is, is, is yeah. like absolute bullshit. And you like, it's just another holodeck mm-hmm. basically, but Q's here. So you don't have to use the holodeck. So just use Q. And I don't like how easily Q just says like, Hey, this is a, this is a reality with a mind of its own. So you really could die here, guys. The danger is real. The writer said so. Aha. Uh-huh. Great. <laughs> yeah. And nothing of consequence happened. And it also allows them to, I guess that's why she could kind of, because part of the conceit of that was that it allowed her to sort of fuck with Q's planning. She actually changed the yeah, scenario. That's, that, that yeah, is Which true. is why is she, he started liking her because he, she was like, well, I'm just going to hustle my way out of this, which is something that he was not expecting at all. He just expected her to sit there. Right. Every time that she was like the key to subverting like Q's expectations, I was like, eh, this, this is fun. Like, I'm, I'm cool with these interactions. This is, this, is cool. this is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. That was. Oh, wait, wait, wait. One last oh, thing. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know, we know when Q like showed up at the end and said like, I forgot my hat, you know, to like before they could like start kissing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to show up one last time while kissing just to go, ew, gross. <laughs> like a 90s kid. Gross. And then, go, and then leave. Q. Cupid is what we watched uh, this episode of Newbie Star Trek. If you guys have been liking the episode, listen, you can give us like or review or wherever you're listening. Because we're on we're on a lot of things now. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. Now? Yeah, yeah. Have we expanded what we're on? Uh, technically, have we, went, we always been? <laughs> technically, we, went, we made it onto one more tiny platform, but I don't even remember the name. I think it's called like <laughs> Boom Play or something. You know, whatever Podbean says, shout we should try to next. Boom Play listeners all over the world. <laughs> so yeah, so that we got that going, and also we love uh, you, Boom Players. <laughs> if you ever want to send us an email, you can always email us at contact at newbiestartrek dot com. That's contact at newbiestartrek dot com, and we have one really quick follow up email. Does everyone remember Doom Hilda when she contacted us that one time? Yeah. Um, yeah. The name yeah, yeah. is Isabel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, she yeah, called definitely. herself the number two fan. Uh, right. So, right. Yes. Correct. So this is her follow up to us asking about that. 
Uh-huh. Hello. Jackie is probably in your best Picard voice, number one. I'll take second because I do listen to other podcasts, which I don't consider cheating because we never said we would be exclusive. I had a George Foreman grill, Doom Hilda. <laughs> nice. No, uh, you know what, Doom Hilda? I really is, like how you write your emails. Yeah. They, they're very the amusing truth. to me. Thank you. Also, like you could listen to the same podcast on the same topic. Like, there's no this is oh, a yeah. god, this is a goddamn we're an uh, open open e- relationship. Yeah, dude, you, you, oh, yeah. you your your holes your ear holes are for whoever wants to like, get in there. You know what <laughs> I mean? We're totally poly oral. Yeah. yeah, whatever that is. <laughs> poly oral. Yeah. Yes, you do. Just, oral, just don't, that is. you know, just don't tell us about it. You know, we like to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all. That's yeah, all we. Ask or you could tell us. Yeah. Sometimes you want to know. Don't tell anyone. I'm going to be really upset. Marvin, <laughs> Marvin, uh, Marvin, and Dan probably will get off on it hearing about the other podcast. Uh. Oh yeah, tell us what the other podcasts are doing. Hey, I thought this was TNG, not NTR. <laughs> oh, oh no, uh. Uh, Star Trek NTR. <laughs> <laughs> that joke has probably made like a hundred times already. <laughs> uh, our next, the the second email we have. This is the last email. Uh, I just wanted to, to read it because the subject line says Shatner's a dick. Uh, <laughs> okay. mm-hmm. uh, love listening on my commute makes me laugh out loud constantly. Love the animations Aww. on YouTube. Thank you for Aww. putting in the effort and time. Thank you for realizing it takes a lot of time. <laughs> it does wow. take a lot of time. It does. Uh, Thank you, John, our person who oh, yeah. oh, animated. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah. Shout out to uh, John. I'm happy to share my consistently poor experiences at conventions. Uh, My first time attending a convention as a seven-year-old, my mom made me the dopest Wrath of Khan era costume from scratch. My Uh father took me to meet Shatner. What a dick. We (laughs) We waited over an hour to meet him. When we reached his booth, he looked, oh my God, he looked down disapprovingly at my wide-eyed childhood face. He then said, that costume is terrible. (gasps) <gasps> begrudgingly signed my picture and ended his signing session for the day, screwing over hundreds of people behind me. Needless to say, that pushed me to begin watching The Next Generation. Shatner was going through his typecast phase where he really didn't want to be associated with Star Trek anymore, but no excuse to crush a child's experience. If you have had any bad experiences meeting actors, please share the hilarity and or tragically hilarious encounters in the podcast. I'm sure your fans will love it. Thank you for your time, Adam. Oh. That's... A that's real horrible. shitty move. <laughs> that is a piece of yeah. You that's know, a real I never, piece of work. I right never there. liked him that much, uh, but I he seems like someone that would do that. So that, it's just a child. <laughs> yeah. The least yeah, he can say really is not. nice to meet you and just sign the thing, and yeah, like, that's all the don't child do that wanted. To a kid. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably, probably a good idea to not meet anybody that you're that you look up to because more than likely they will let you down. I mean. Yeah. For for convention viewing, I mean, we've we've talked about a lot of them before. Like Dan met Kevin Conroy in the bathroom. <laughs> That's true. Rest in peace, Batman. Yeah, he prevented Batman from taking a poo before his his, <laughs> his panel. Yeah, and there's a there's a there's a short of it on YouTube or and or TikTok. You can watch about it. <laughs> and we also accidentally met Eric Estrada as we were leaving Comic Con, and he kind of oh, activated. True. Yeah, but they yeah these aren't all. N- none of these are like asshole moments where we're like, no, yeah, Jesus, do you, you have any such negative ones? I've never had a negative experience with a with a celebrity. I've met some negative musicians, but oh you know, okay, like in what way? There, I mean, musicians are almost always gonna let you down so <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's never it's never a good Shots fired at musicians no for real i mean like if you play a mandolin almost, right in yeah i mean they're the closest... almost always gonna let you down in terms of like meeting a famous or very good or a musician you look up to i feel like they almost always let me down so mm. i mean the closest um, i've been to meeting yeah. a musician i actually liked was I, I like a rapper named Chaos. Uh, oh, yeah. He has a drummer he works with all the time named Ray Garraway. I only know this because I liked his him so much. I looked at all of his band names, members' names, and would know mm-hmm. about them. And then uh, I spotted him, Ray Garraway, going into the alley while he was just leaving the venue. I was like, oh, my God, you're Ray Garraway. And he's like, how the fuck do you know who I am? <laughs> and then uh, he took a picture with me on a phone where I lost the phone, so I lost the picture. 
But Damn. the next time I went to a Chaos concert, I just said Ray Garraway while we were up near the front. And mm-hmm. he like activated, looked towards me, recognized me. And then after the concert was like, you're the guy. And then uh, in the back, uh, my friends and I went to the alley with him. And he was like, let me see if Kevin will come out. Chaos, Chaos's name is Kevin. And then you're like, let yeah, me see if he'll, he'll come out. And then Kevin was like, apparently like too like, like hung over to come out. But he was like, <laughs> oh, dude, I'll make up for it. And he brought out like a bag of weed and we all just started smoking. <laughs> What? in the alley yeah. and we're, we're like all right cool thanks for the I weed never, so. i never heard this story <laughs> yeah so that was fun uh but that's, uh, that's like the only time i've met like a musician i would have been like oh cool you're this musician that's like the only time yeah that's about it i mean when, i think the funniest celebrity meeting we ever had was andrew wk at comic con when he was doing the cartoon network promo <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't actually meet him. We just spotted him. No, we, we just him out saw him. Wild. Yeah, we saw him. Yeah, he was him. recording yeah. a, a, a promo for like a Cartoon Network like prom like weekend where he was hosting something, and you know he had to like record a bump. And then when he was done with the with the script line, he just like kept on like mugging weirdly into the camera for like five whole seconds until the guy told him yeah. to stop. Yeah, they need a tail, so they're just like yeah. they need him to keep going, and then uh, just getting closer <laughs> and closer to the camera and just watching it from afar from yeah. a completely <laughs> different angle is just like, yep, that's what that it's would look surreal. like, but it's still. Yeah. Hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah. And then he ended with, were we good? We're good? Okay. Yeah. yeah. He like turns off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he I turns mean, back to his person. Credit, he was a pro. He, yeah. He's he was... a pro. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I've fortunately, at least personally, never had a really negative. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had that like, yeah. supremely disenchanting experience. No soul crushing scenario like Kirk, you know, I've you know had insulting negative, my looks and then. Some negative actor ones, but I won't get into those. Oh, are they NDA covered? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some of the, <laughs> there might be some. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of our ex- our experiences are NDA covered. Uh, some of our experiences are very much tied to our our work. So. Well, technically, one of mine isn't anymore. But it was what's his name? Uh, oh my God, Kevin Smith. Yeah, it was Kevin Smith. But he was just he was just like the nicest guy in the world. Like, because we needed to do an interview with him, and we had him scheduled for an hour, and he sat for three hours. Just because he just wanted to be like, do you need more stuff? And he just kept keep talking about comic books, if you like. That's literally what happened. <laughs> so, I'm very uh, good at that, you know. So that was that was nice. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Luckily, we haven't had one yet. Knock on wood. Uh, that's surprising considering a lot of us live in L.A. <laughs> we had bad ones. We just can't talk about it. <laughs> uh, you know what? That's fair, too. That's also fair. Yeah. Under, yeah. under legal and career ramifications <laughs> okay well all right well that was the newbie star trek if you guys want to listen to any other stuff we do we have uh, the fugitive frames.com it's got links to all that stuff like the fugitive frames film podcast fugitive games our youtube let's play channel and kind of more of a streaming channel now if we do anything with it now we just kind of do a quick stream and then we pop off but yeah that type of stuff mm-hmm. all that is at fugitive frames.com What's next week? What, what is what is the episode after this one? Oh, it's the drum head. This is the episode I recognized just by looking at the thumbnail. And I was like, is that the drum head? And I was like, yes, it is. Because it's an episode I really like. At least remember nostalgia liking. glasses. On. Yeah, nostalgia glasses on. So let's see if it actually holds up. Uh, but yeah, the drum head next week. And we'll see you guys next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Take care, y'all. Bye.